Hi, thanks for joining me today. I've got a problem from the 2006 Australian Maths Olympiad. We're going to have P of N to be the, project, the product of the digits of N. So, for example, P of 236 is 2 times 3 times 6, which is 36. We want to find all N such that P of N equals N squared minus 17N plus 56. And I've got a little hint here which I've covered. So if you want to have a go at this problem without the hint, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. Otherwise, I'm going to release the hint. So the hint is to consider what's bigger, n or p of n. Anyway, if you want to have a go at this problem, pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. And I'm going to dive straight into a solution. Okay, so the hint told us to consider what's bigger, n or p of n. And just by testing a few different values of P of N, you can see that P of N is always less than or equal to N. And it turns out that that is true for every value of N. And we can prove that relatively quickly. So let me make that my claim. And now let's prove this. So let's start by taking an arbitrary positive integer N. And we're going to write it in this form. A0 plus A1 times 10 to the 1 plus A2 times 10 squared plus A3 times 10 cubed and so on. And let's suppose it is a, uh, let's go with a k plus 1 digit number, which means the highest power of k is 10 to the k. So then I'm going to write it as a k times 10 to the k, like so. So every positive integer can be written in this way. Uh, There's just base 10. And now, well, what can I say? If this is n, what would p of n be? p of n is simply going to be the product of the digits, which are precisely a0, a1, a2, a3, and so on, up to a k. So a0 a1, and so on, all the way up to ak, like so. Okay, uh, in fact, let me write the ak minus 1 term here as well. Well, how many a's have we got here? Well, we're going from 0 to k minus 1, so there's precisely k of them. And I know that each of these a's must be uh, at most 9, uh, because, of course, we're just working base 10, so each digit must be at most 9. So in particular, it's less than uh, 10. So I can say that this is less than, or I can put less than or equal to 10 to the power of k times a k, like so. So p of n is less than or equal to 10 to the k times a k. Okay, but what is uh, 10 to the k times a k? Well, that's clearly going to be this term here. And if n is all of this stuff plus a k times 10 to the k, all of this stuff here is going to be at least 0. It could be 0, but it can't be negative. And so therefore, 10 to the k times a k is less than or equal to n. And we get that p of n must therefore be less than or equal to n. And we've proved our claim in basically just two lines here. Amazing. So we get that n is bigger than or equal to pn for all positive integers n, and we're going to use that to help us solve this equation up here. Okay, so if we do have a positive integer n which satisfies this, well, I can then use the fact that we know that for all values of n, p of n is less than or equal to n, and substitute that in here, and I get n squared minus 17n plus 56 must be less than or equal to n, and rearranging this gives me n squared minus 18n plus 56 must be less than or equal to 0. Now we can just use some uh, basic uh, algebra tricks here to factorise this. We get n minus 14, n minus 4 is less than or equal to 0. And if you want to, you can think about what this quadratic would look like. That would be 4, that would be 14. And we get that n must be in between there. And obviously n here is a positive integer, so we can say that n must be one of these numbers from 4 up to 14. So there's 11 possibilities there. And so you may ask, well, have we just reduced this to 11 cases? And sort of, yes, but we can actually deal with these 11 cases quite efficiently. OK, so we're going to split up these 11 cases here into two cases, one where n is a single digit number and one where n is a double digit number. Let's firstly deal with the first case where n is a single digit number. So it's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or 9, in which case p of n is simply just n. And so this equation here, we can replace the p of n with n, bringing it to the other side, we get n squared minus 18n plus 56 equals 0. And we've already factorized this a second ago. This is n minus 4, n minus 14. And again, since n has to be one of these numbers here, n can't be 14. And so the only solution is n is 4. 
Great, so we found one solution, and there's only one solution among the single digit numbers. Now let's consider what happens if n is a double digit number, so 10, 11, all the way up to 14. OK, so in this second case where n is a double digit number, we can write n in the form 10 plus t, say, where t is uh, either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. OK, cool. Now all we have to do is think about what p of n is. Well, p of n is just going to be 1 times t, which is t. So just for example, 14, what's p of that? Well, it's just 1 times 4, which would be 4. And so we get p of n is just 1 times t. And now just subbing that in, we get t equals n squared, but n is just 10 plus t. So 10 plus t squared minus 17n, which is, again, 17 lots of 10 plus t, plus 56. Now we just have to do a bit of expanding and simplifying. This becomes 100 plus 20t plus t squared minus 170 minus 17t plus 56. Bringing this all onto the right-hand side, we get t squared. Uh, we've got 20t minus 17t, that's 3t, minus another t, that's 2t. And then the constant, we get 100 minus 170, so that's minus 70, plus six, uh, 56, that's minus 14 equals 0. So we've got t squared plus 2t minus 14 equals 0. And now you can try and think about factorising this. This does not factorise. And my favourite way to tell if a quadratic factorises nicely is to look at its discriminant. So here... We looked at the discriminant, we get b squared, which is 4, minus 4 times 1 times 14, uh, times negative 14. So 4 plus 4 times 14, so 4 plus 4 times 14, which is 4 times 15, which is 60. And 60 is not a square number, therefore this quadratic does not factorise nicely. In particular, therefore, t cannot be an integer. And that tells us that there are no solutions amongst 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And therefore, our only solution to this problem here is n equals 4. There are no other solutions. Uh, and this is quite a nice problem. So this is from the Olympiad, so aimed at kind of high school students who are quite, quite smart at maths. Uh, and it, it, the solution here is quite nice because it doesn't require anything super advanced, but just the steps to get there might not seem super intuitive if you've not seen this before. So the first step is to first prove that p of n must be less than or equal to n. And once you get that, you're just narrowing it down to a few cases. And once you get to there, it's relatively routine. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.